Now these really marshy meadows like this are actually quite rare. They were, I suppose they were the easiest sort of habitats to drain in the past when a lot of the, these damp meadows were, were drained by farmers. Um, but a few remain, luckily, like this one here, and it's absolutely stunning. It's full of marsh thistles uh, flowering at the moment. Uh, yellow flag earlier in the year provides a huge, it's yellow with yellow flag in here. And a little bit later as well, it, it keeps going, so it keeps the nectar sources going into the autumn. So things like water mint attracts lots of butterflies and bees in August and September time. Well, these mown paths are really good for uh, the birds to come in and feed. Some things like blackbirds, and you've just seen a missile thrush, will come and feed on the worms, which are difficult to find in the grass, in the taller grass, and so it's a bit of habitat for them. It's also good for other flowers and having a bit of edge habitat. Uh, in all habitats, the edges are the important bit. So the little sunny edges just along the edge of the path will be really rich in insects. Particularly good on when the weather's not so good like it is today, on those sort of cloudy, damp days. These little sun traps along the side of the, of the uh, grass and just along the path would be really good places for the insects to just bathe and get a little bit of sun. So like the paths with the edges of the path being good, the edges of the meadow are really good, particularly where they border onto woodlands. And the best way to, to have an edge really is to have not just a, a meadow which goes straight into the trees, but a, a sort of intergrade zone uh, where you get some scrub like this bramble that's just been allowed to grow up here. It's absolutely buzzing with insects as well at the moment, but it also provides cover for birds such as the black cap which uh, winters down in the Mediterranean and arrives here in March. Uh, this bird, the male, has a black cap, the female has a brown cap, and they build their nest just in amongst the bramble stems there, uh, raise two or three broods during the this course of the spring, and then they'll migrate down, or some of them will winter in Britain, but most of them will migrate down to the Mediterranean for the winter. Another early arriving migrant bird is the chiff chaff, uh, if you're learning bird song, it's one of the easiest ones to learn, the chiff chaff, chiff chaff, it just says its name. And that one arrives in March. And that one doesn't, it likes bramble patches and sort of bits of rough bracken, but it nests right down almost on the ground. And it makes a beautiful dome nest like this with uh, little bits of moss and grass all woven together in a tiny little dome. And then the, they will raise a brood of chicks, the pair will raise a brood of chicks in that nest. And they'll feed, and the bramble of course is because it attracts so many insects, it's so good for food for them as well. So they don't have to go too far. The black cap, it's got a nest in here because they'll still be nesting this time of year. It doesn't have to go far to find food for its chicks with all these insects buzzing about. Another bird which we'll use is the song thrush. Uh, song thrushes nest in gardens, all sorts of places really, but they, they like patches like this as well. It's this intergrade zone between the trees and the meadow. Uh, of course the song thrushes are feeding on worms and snails and slugs, that sort of thing. So there's plenty of food for them around here, uh, but they do need a protected place to nest. And bramble, there's nothing, you know, you don't, trying to walk through a bramble, you don't want to go through there. Let alone a fox or a badger would have trouble getting through there as well, and other predators too. So it's a brilliant natural defence system with its spines for these birds which can just sneak in there. They don't go deep into the bramble, they're just often just under the leaves near the surface and they just part the leaves and find the nest there and uh, they do really really well nesting in these situations. Whereas the black cap and the chiff chap are one of our, some of our earliest migrants to arrive in March and April time, one of the latest is the spotted flycatcher and this doesn't often arrive until well into May, sometimes right at the end of May and they will raise a brood of young. Usually they'll nest up in the trees, but they love having these edges here, because they, as they're called fly catchers, they feed on uh, butterflies and other flying insects. And what they do is they like a perch, so there's some nice dead branches here. So they'll perch there, scouting around, they spot a, a good uh, prey item, whiz down, catch it, and then come back to their perch. Lovely birds, they're sort of pale brown birds, but if you look closely at them, they're really, really beautiful birds, little pencil, streaking on them and little streaks on their breast and streaks and marks all over their body and they've got that wide broad based bill which is specially adapted for catching insects and as well as trees uh, spotted fly catchers if you've got them in gardens along the edges of fields they love to sit on fence posts as well they like a prominent perch which they can scan the surrounding vegetation and look for prey and this shallow pond was just dug a few weeks ago and so it's a very new pond but it's already full of life. 
Just within hours of the pond being dug in May, there were broad-bodied chaser dragonflies whizzing around. Uh, they love ponds like this, new ponds, so they can lay their eggs in there. Uh, but if you look closely in the water, you'll see all sorts of creatures already, things like pond skaters, water boatmen, all sorts of things which have colonised this, this habitat. And also the bare ground around the, the uh, pond is really important. Bare ground is one of those habitats which many people don't really think about, but it's really, really important. Uh, because the bare ground, the good thing about bare ground is it warms up. So when you get a cold weather in the summer, a lot of these insects are struggling because they're all cold blooded. They're struggling to warm up. But a little patch of bare ground, uh, if there's a hint of sun, a bit of warmth, will just warm up nicely and they can sunbathe on there or at least gather some heat from the, uh, the ground and then warm up just enough to keep active. So that's what keeps a lot of insects going in some of our really bad summers. I mean, luckily, we've had some lovely weather this year.